Welcome to a lesson on determining if a table of values represents a linear function. Let's first talk about the rate of change between two points or two ordered pairs. Remember when we have ordered pairs, the first values would be the inputs. So here x sub one and x sub two are the inputs and the second values are the outputs. So in this case y sub one and y sub two are the outputs. So given any two points x sub one comma y sub one and x sub two comma y sub two, the rate of change between the points on the interval x sub one to x sub two is determined by computing the following ratio. The rate of change is equal to the ratio of the change in output to the change in input, or we can say the change in output divided by the change in input, where the change in output is equal to y sub two minus y sub one, and the change in input is equal to x sub two minus x sub one. If a function is linear, then the rate of change will be the same between any pair of points, and this constant rate of change is the slope of a linear function. So in example one, we're asked to determine if the following function is linear by computing the rate of change between several pairs of points. If it is linear, we want to give the slope. So what we're going to do is find the rate of change between these two points or these two ordered pairs, these two points are ordered pairs, then between these two points are ordered pairs, and then finally between these two points are these two ordered pairs. If the rate of change is the same, then the table represents a linear function, and that rate of change will be the slope. If any of the rates of change are different, the table is not a linear function. So using these first two points ordered pairs, the change in the output is going to be 14 minus 23, and we'll have to divide it by the change in the input, which is negative two minus negative five. Simplifying here, we have 14 minus 23, that's negative nine. Divided by, this becomes negative two plus five, which equals positive three. Negative nine divided by three is equal to negative three. So the rate of change, so the rate of change between these first two points or these first two ordered pairs is negative three. Now we'll determine the rate of change between these two points or these two ordered pairs. So the change in the output is eight minus 14. The change in the input is zero minus negative two. Eight minus 14 is negative six. Zero minus negative two is two. Negative six divided by two is equal to negative three. So far the rate of change is the same. And now we'll find the rate of change between these two points or these two ordered pairs. So the change in the output is negative one minus eight, and the change in the input is three minus zero. Simplifying we have a negative nine divided by three, which also equals negative three. And now we'll find the rate of change between these two points. So the change in the output is negative 16 minus negative one. The change in the input is eight minus three. So we have negative 16 plus one, that's negative 15, and then eight minus three is equal to five. Negative 15 divided by five is equal to negative three. So because the rates of change are the same between these pairs of points, the table, does represent a linear function, and the slope is negative three. Before we look at our next example, another way to check to see if this is linear would be to graph these points on the Cartesian plane, which I've already done here. And notice how because we can sketch a line that would pass through all five of these points, that's the graphical verification that the table does represent a linear function. Let's look at two more examples. Notice here the inputs are n and the outputs are t of n. So we'll find the rate of change between these two points, these two points, these two points, and finally these two points. So here the change in the output is going to be negative one minus negative three, and the change in the input is equal to negative two minus negative six. Simplifying, we have negative one plus three, that's two. 
This simplifies to negative two plus six, which is positive four. The rate of change is equal to one half. The rate of change between these two points is going to be equal to, again, the change in the output is one minus negative one, divided by the change in the input, which is zero minus negative two. So we have one plus one or two over zero minus negative two equals zero plus two or two. So notice how here the rate of change is one. So because these two rates of change are not the same, we already know this table is not a linear function. Let's go ahead and find the remaining rates of change. The rate of change between these two points is going to be two minus one divided by one minus zero, simplifies to one divided by one, which equals one. The last two points of rate of change is going to be six minus two, divided by four minus one. So we have six minus two is four, and four minus one is equal to three. Four thirds does not simplify. So four thirds is the rate of change between these two points. But again, because all these rates of change are not the same, we can say the table does not represent a linear function. To verify the table does not represent a linear function graphically, again, we can plot these points on the Cartesian plane, which I've already done. Here they are, and notice how it's not possible to sketch a line that would pass through all five of these points, which is the graphical verification. The table does not represent a linear function. Now let's look at our last example. Same question, different table. So again, we'll find the rate of change between these two points, these two points, these two points, and these two points. Notice how in this case, though, the input is x and the output is g of x. And also notice the output is always equal to the constant three. So the rate of change between these first two points is going to be, again, the change in output divided by the change in input, where the change in the output is three minus three, and the change in input is negative two minus negative five. Simplifying, we get zero divided by, this is negative two plus five, which is positive three, but zero divided by three is zero. For the next two points, the change in the output is three minus three again. The change in input is zero minus negative two. So we're going to have zero divided by two, which also equals zero. Notice so far the rates of change are the same. We should recognize they're always going to be the same because the change in output is always going to be zero. But let's go ahead and continue. The rate of change between these two points is going to be equal to the change in output, which is three minus three, divided by the change in input, which is four minus zero. So here we have zero divided by four, which is still zero. And then for these two points, the rate of change is going to be, again, the change in output is three minus three, divided by the change in input, which is six minus four. So we have zero divided by two, which again is zero. So because the rates of change are all the same, this table does represent a linear function, and the slope is zero. To check this graphically, again, we can plot these points on the Cartesian plane, which I've already done. Here are the five points. Again, because we can sketch a line that would pass through all five points, this is the graphical verification. That the table does represent a linear function. I hope you found this helpful.